Thank you, Twitter. <laughs> Thank you, Twitter. Thank you, Facebook, <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> Snapchat. Mwah. I love you. Welcome to part two. We're so glad you joined us back. Sure. We've got a great episode coming your way. Lots more to still unfold and talk about the end of 2020 and the Whew. amazing, crazy things from 2021. So we want to welcome you to the Lionheart Institute podcast for this episode. Part one was a doozy. It was. It Good was times. lots of fun. I'm Richard Thomas. And I'm Tiffany Thomas. And welcome to part two. <laughs> Thank you, Twitter. <laughs> Thank you, Twitter. Thank you, Facebook, <laughs> YouTube, Snapchat. Mwah. I be, love you. They began the process. <laughs> I have to say, I don't think I've ever been filled with more delight yeah. at seeing Trump's Twitter accounts uh, canceled. Now, I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> for a long time growing up, I lived next door to uh, a horrible neighbor. They were uh, actually great neighbors. I loved them. Yeah. But they had a dog that barked uh, nonstop. Uh, and so every time I saw them, an anger actually came right? over me because <laughs> the dog would not stop barking. Uh, and they actually would say to me, my dog has freedom of speech. Oh, right? my gosh. And and there's a lot of people that say, oh. we, have, we have robbed him oh of his gosh. First Amendment right. Yes, freedom of speech. Yes. So many people went crazy over this. Crazy talking about how we are giving up our amendments. They're being taking, taken away from us and our, our freedom of speech right is being abused and taken away. Okay, to clarify, because apparently there's confusion, right? right. There's, there's people that are genuinely confused. Our amendment right to freedom of speech is based on government control. Right. Okay, social media is not controlled by the government. Social media have their own policies, their own rules and regulations, their own community guidelines that are meant to be followed. And that those meant to be followed because they believe it's going to be the most profitable. Right. And it's going to be the most accurate presentation of the business model that they want to present to the general public right. that invests in their company. And so when the general public is being lied to right. and it's not beneficial to the business model, yeah. you shut it off. Well, I mean, look, the truth is they allowed Trump to spread lies for way too long and they knew it. And when he incited an insurrection and a riot against our capital to overturn democracy, they realized, oh shit, I think we let it go a little too far. And they're about to sue us. Yeah, we're going to be, we might be in trouble for this. Right. So they were completely within their rights to close down the accounts. I believe Rudy Giuliani had accounts multiple closed down. Accounts. Um, multiple QAnon supporters had accounts closed down. And they just went down the list and started knocking them all off. And I know people were furious. Sure. Um, I know there's uh, another app, was it Parler? Yes, that Parler, emerged out of it. Um, that got shut down as well, and people were furious about that. But let me tell you something. If you haven't had a chance to really research Parlor and what took place on right. that app, let me tell you something. It was disgusting. It is the worst of humanity, the worst of racism, the worst of just pure filth and disgust that people have no issues with talking about and, and supporting, and they should not be allowed a voice. Period. When you are preaching hate, tell it, girl. And you are preaching racism. It, it, I'm sorry. So for those of you who think, oh, it was wrong that they got taken down, I'm sorry. You're wrong for supporting such a thing against humanity. Well, well, well. Tell the truth, shame the devil. That's what they say around my neighborhood. Right. So look, I, I'm sorry, but I found joy. I'm not gonna lie. I found joy it in was, Trump being silenced. It, it was kind of like they took that beautiful little doggy and put it on a ranch. Far, far away. And uh, I was a happy young child that day. That, that puppy I know, went gone. It was gone. so quiet again, you know? <laughs> it was, listen, I lived in the hood and it was the most peaceful <laughs> moment of my life. It was just great. When great. that talk was gone, I slept like a baby. Oh my goodness. So I love you, Twitter. Right. Thanks for getting the ball rolling on that one. And we got that special moment. Mm -hmm. Inauguration oh, Day. Oh, yes. Inauguration. 
See, I'm, I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling tipsy <laughs> off of it. I'm still just buzz. Oh my gosh, day. inauguration day, a day that I think I will say myself and millions of people felt like was never going to come. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who have who have literally attacked me, yeah. um, trying to get me yeah. to give them. Reasons so I voted true. for voted for Biden. Oh yeah. Um, reasons that I, I thought the Harris ticket was so strong and mm-hmm. so good. They they were not satisfied with anti Trump. They wanted to know why pro Biden. Yep. And uh, I'm gonna just say it honestly. It could have been pro gorilla, <laughs> pro bunny rabbit. <laughs> right. it, it could it could have been your mama that ran for president. Mm-hmm. I'd have and, voted for and her. there's a high probability that your mama would have gotten my vote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and and, and, and and it's because very few people either portrayed as much hate as I believe he did yeah. in his four years, or I'm gonna give him a break. See, I'm not the I don't I don't want to stalk him forever. Um, I want to get his name out my mouth and I want to mm-hmm. move on to the next section. Yeah. Or perhaps he was just such a weak leader. Yeah. He wasn't able to clarify he did not support white supremacist groups. He did not support hate. He did not support the things that would divide and destroy our country. I believe the worst is actually the probability. However, even if he's just too weak to have led, it was time for him to go. Well, and I would say that I I feel like his... his, um Thoughts were very out in the open because, I mean, let's go back to the riot, uh, the Black Lives Matter protest in Jan- or July and the insurrection riot. And you listen to Trump's speeches and his, you know, uh, press conferences on both of them. I'm just trying I mean, to give the brother a chance. And, uh, he had a chance. Yeah. That chance is done. But he literally says that Black Lives Matter protests and everything that happened this summer, that they were domestic terrors. Right. He called them domestic terrorism, that they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, that what they were doing was un-American, undemocratic, and basically they were terrorists and should be treated as such. No less than 10 years. Right. Which he started, he passed that bill that would allow for no less than 10 years in prison based on those crimes. Do you think all them people at the Capitol are going to get less than 10 years? <laughs> yes, I think no, they will. No, they're not. We'll white see. privilege will, will prevail in America. I, I, think, I think, unfortunately, white privilege will prevail, and I think they will not get the sentences they probably rightfully should. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, he goes on and he talks about, initially anyway, the, the protesters and the right, well, you know, they're, they're Americans. Mm. They're patriots. Like... They're protecting democracy. We love you very much. They were full of white supremacists doing his bidding, let's be honest. Yeah. It's really and, that simple. And, and certainly not, air, and, and this is where I'm torn, mm-hmm. okay? Being raised in a mixed culture, right. right? Tasting both worlds. Not everybody that even went to the Capitol um, intended to storm it. Right. Not everybody mm-hmm. intended to hurt people right Some people just decided to not, build a not everybody yeah a lot of a lot of that too um mm-hmm. a lot of people just didn't realize that they were walking amongst white nationalists they didn't realize yeah that they were walking with racists they didn't recognize that they were walking with people that literally wanted to find the vice president of the united states yeah, and, and hang, him. hang him from a tree or from a gallow that they actually constructed in they front built, of, yep. of the capital they didn't realize that people that people Within Congress, were texting where Pelosi was. Yes. Okay. Um, they didn't realize those things were going on. Right. They thought that they were part of nothing more than a high school prep rally, mm-hmm. and they were chanting this nonsense that they weren't really even coherent in. But the reality of it is this, and we're we're right there during uh, Dr. King. Um, right. Is that it's not so much the words of the enemy that that hurt us, the actions of the enemy that hurt us. It's the silence of our friends. Yeah. And so, white America, it just should be a wake, a wake up call. Yeah. It should be a reality check to For where sure. you talk to your wives, you talk to your husbands, you talk to your brothers and your sisters, and your children, your children, and you say, hey, by being silent or being complicit with people next to me that are clearly racist, yeah, that are clearly haters of of democracy that are clearly haters of our republic, right? Mm-hmm. So much so that they would protect an Ill, Ill vile man, mm-hmm. right? With no character, no integrity, um, at the cost of our great republic. 
um, because they live their lives not in truth but in lies. Yeah. Right. It's time to have some honest conversations. Not with me. Not with people of color. <laughs> right. Where you uh, where you where you try to get justification from us. Yeah. But in a place where you sit down and you say, "Holy fuck." Yeah. I think there's some things about my own thinking that I need to reevaluate, that I need to to reassess. Do I really believe that speech that I I've told all my friends that that's how I judge people? I'm yeah. colorblind. Right. Um, if you found yourself over the years saying I'm colorblind, I don't judge people by the color of their skin, mm-hmm. but by the content of their character. But you were shouting during this whole process that we need to do yep. do right by the republic we need yes. to do right by democracy realize that you were walking with white supremacists yep. and i say that to say not everybody that was on the confederate um was full of hate yeah but more people died than that in that civil war than in any war in american history yep and so we need to evaluate those things about ourselves or our nation will eventually trickle back to that same spot i mean look the truth is america is change is coming it's here it's here and we are going to continue to see change and revival and new life breathed into this nation and the truth is are you which side are you going to be on we have been comfortable for way too long white america we have we have rested in white privilege whether you want to acknowledge it or not but we have benefited from it greatly and that time is coming to an yes, end yes, sir. Because all people deserve privilege. All people deserve to be treated as human beings. To be respected. And as equals. And to be able to have the same opportunities and choices as everybody else. So I encourage you, if you have been caught in that comfortable bubble, I suggest you start opening your eyes and asking some questions and having those tough conversations. Or it's going to be quite a shocker for you when, when change smacks you in the face. I, I, I don't know which show it was I was watching. I don't think it was actually even the show I was watching. But it actually brought a tear to my eyes because there's a lot of people that walk around and they truly believe that is that our world is just based on the choices that you make. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, a person was arguing, there's no difference between you and I. I mm-hmm. just made good choices. Right. And man, it hit me like a brick in the face because I thought, you know what? I've made good choices. I have. I've made good choices to go to a great university. I, I made good choices yeah. to follow the instructors at my workplace. I made choices to um, be humble. But then the back part of her statement, I think it was a her, mm-hmm. was this. The, her response was so full of power. Yeah, it was. It was, you didn't make good choices. Yeah. You had good choices. Yep. Big difference. And it's a huge difference. Yeah. Right? Because so many of us are presented with a world where we have few choices. Yep. And so I know I know you're saying that life is what we make of it. And it is. It okay? can be. And a lot of our channel is dedicated to mindset. Yeah. And and leading your families and making sure that you're a voice of of good in your community and making sure that you're following good principles yeah. and, and doing things that are going to give you the best opportunity to go from humble beginnings to as big as you want to grow in your life. And I believe that there isn't a dream that you can't achieve in your life if you set your mind to it and you're aware of the obstacles that are in front of you and how to negotiate it. But how to negotiate it, how to get around them, um, you have to get a little bit of luck yeah. <laughs> and you have to get wisdom yeah. on how to negotiate those obstacles. And so it's not just so so much about being in a place where you make good choices, mm-hmm. but it's putting yourself in a position where you have good choices to make. Right. And America, let's be honest, it is our responsibility to create those one for another. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the best choices we've made as Americans is Biden and Harris. <laughs> I really do believe that. And <clears throat> I don't know about you out there, but I know watching the first female vice president <laughs> being sworn into office, <clears throat> excuse me, and not just the first female, but the first woman of color yeah. to be sworn in as vice so president of the United States of America was one of the most amazing moments in my life. 
And I know that I sat there. I'm fairly speechless to it. <laughs> it had such an impact on me. I just bawled. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't. I, I couldn't watch it and not cry. And I watched it so many times throughout the day. Everybody posting the clips on Facebook and social media. And every time I saw it, like tears would just run down my face. And our two-year-old little girl, she came up and she crawled in my lap as I was watching this. And she, she said, Mama, okay? Mama, okay? And, I, and she started wiping the tears from my face. And I said, yeah, baby girl, Mama's okay. And she's watching this TV. And I said, so I said you see her? I said, you see that beautiful lady up there? I said, someday that can be you. And she looked at her and she, she looked at me. I said, you can be president someday, baby girl. And she says, oh, me, president? Oh, yay! <laughs> and she put her little hands up in the air and she's just jumping up and down. Me, president, me, president, you know? And it was a beautiful moment that I got to share with my baby girl because she is a beautiful mixed little girl. And, and finally, there's somebody up there that all these beautiful young black girls can look at and say, she looks like me. Yeah. And finally, for the first time, truly believe that there is hope that they can be there someday, that they can truly be anything they it's want powerful. and they can run this country someday because now they have somebody to look at who looks like them and they can look at her and just be like, wow, I could be that someday. And that was, for me, that was just such a beautiful moment to just take in and just how hard women have fought, yeah. how hard women of color have fought. And to have both of that in one woman take the vice presidency was just beautiful it was it truly was and i know i felt a lot of anger follow too from people talking right. about her um and, and disgust right. people talking about our vice presidents how well she won't be a role model for my daughter i would never want her to be a role model and just all this hate and oh she only got there because she was black and blah blah blah, blah. oh man sure. i was just so angry my favorite one and it, it, it is it's a little bit vulgar it's a little bit lewd but that she slapped her way to yeah. the top. Mm -hmm. And all I could think about was, mm -hmm. was uh, if this woman slept her way to the top, mm -hmm. just imagine how much she is going to be able to accomplish now that the world is wide awake to who she is. <laughs> Amen to that. And of course, I don't believe she slept her way to the Not top at all. and so forth. That's a whole different video. Yeah. But I thought to myself, what a remarkable woman Yeah. who overcame so many obstacles, yeah. climbed through so many hoops, um, fought the very person that she's now on the ticket with as the vice president yeah. because of her passion yeah. for mm -hmm. justice, called him out, now um, is holding him accountable yeah. to the things that he said. Um, and I believe she will. Mm -hmm. I believe that she will stand just and she will stand firm yeah. in what, she, what, what Biden has, which she's already helped him shed his old wineskin. Yeah, right? for sure. I mean, there's some things about his past that are, that are um, I don't know if the word is irre irreprehensible. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? But <laughs> it's definitely disgusting. It's things right. that make your heart heart go, man, that, yeah. that grieves me. But <clears throat> he is a man, when I listened to him um, at that inauguration, mm -hmm. take responsibility for where he was at. Yes. Take responsibility. I've heard him over the years for the wrong decisions he made, trying mm -hmm. to do good things, but seeing how it backfired, yeah. seeing how hard he and Obama fought to make those issues right, right, and how honest he was. I mean, have you ever heard a president be so honest to say, I owe you, black America. Thank right. you. Thank well, you. And he's the first president to openly, um, you know, outside of Obama, of course, but the first white president to openly acknowledge systemic racism. Well, I think he even went a step further. Than, I mean, he said that on Inauguration Day. Yeah. So I think he even went a step further than Obama. And, and I, I say that with high respect for mm -hmm. what I believe is one of the greatest presidents. Right. Um, at least in our lifetime. Um, my lifetime has been short, though. I'm a young man. <laughs> right. Um, but to see that inauguration. Yeah. It was beautiful. It just... To see them dancing. The way that we would date. Right. right. 
Well, you know, and we were just talking about this too, how several days, you know, after the inauguration, it felt peaceful. Like, you know, even on right. social media, even though there's still a little hate going on about our president, vice president currently, <clears throat> I noticed a sense of quiet. It was quiet. And it felt peaceful. And I think for the first time in a really long time, people were not overwhelmed by so much hate on social media and all the violence and all the, the racism. They could just soak in the moment of feeling true hope that we can unite this nation, yeah. that we can bring about true change in this country, and that we can somehow put aside the differences that we had over the last sure. four years and the division that was brought in by the president and, and heal this country. And you've got a bunch of, of, of people saying, you all didn't give us no <laughs> unity, no respect. Listen, I'm not begging none of y'all to be friends with me. That's not what I'm doing. Not at all. Um, I'm mm -hmm. saying that our approach uh, should be different. That yeah. we should give opportunities to say, hey, I messed up. To yeah. re-reflect, re right? And that, you know, we did, we did a video on forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting. Right. right, or saying what they did was okay. Right, uh, yeah. or, or, or just letting them kind of get away with it. The people didn't actually have Trump signs in their yard. and, and uh, Right. Our, those are our neighbors, right? Yeah. Trump signs in their yards, and, and uh, they acted like this was a high school basketball game, and we were going my team versus your team, and your team happened to be throwing eggs at my team and calling me, or calling me dog and, 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 yeah. and uh, trying to take my integrity from, not my integrity, but my value. Yeah. For me, right? Um, and here we are now, though, just a few weeks into the presidency. <laughs> right. And we got QAnon7. What's that group called? <laughs> QAnons. The QAnons themselves. Oh, my goodness. Creating chaos amongst the GOP because they say, hey, it's over. Uh, <laughs> we need to okay. move on. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I kind of feel a little bad for the Trumpists. I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like they kind of dug their own grave. But I do feel a little bit bad because in, in a matter of a couple weeks, literally, they have had their president rebuke them. Yes. For turn their actions. Turn his back completely on them mm -hmm. for their actions in the Capitol. And then now they have Q... Their other mighty leader who has been feeding them all these stories for quite some time over the last four years about Democrats and, and feeding their hate of Democrats and that they're, they're, they're this horrible, evil, baby-sacrificing, child-eating cult. Um, their leader literally <laughs> sends them a message. Now, I'm going to read you what he said because it's hysterical, and I'm not going to lie, it, 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 it made me laugh. But Q called for all their followers and Trumpists to respect the election results and unite behind President Biden. <laughs> and, and I read this and I had to scratch my head a minute and I was like, what, 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 I got to read this again. And like, what the fuck did I just read? And then one of the QAnon supporters went on to say, that he was not sure basically what he was getting at. So he, he, he says to himself, hold on, I'm, I'm going to read this word for word just because I, I want to be very clear on this. He says, I'm not sure if he wants us to just set aside all the stuff we believe about Democrats or what. He says, <laughs> he says, how are we supposed to respect the, dem the democratic process above his convictions that Biden belonged to a party of devil-worshipping child-molesting cannibals. Cannibals? Cannibals. Q saying that whether they're a red-piled freedom fighter who serves the Lord or a pedophile who drinks the blood of infants, we are all Americans, and at the end of the day, we should all unite. In other words, sure, Joe Biden is enabling homicidic Satanist, but he's still a person that voters vote, have chosen to be their president, and you should respect them. So that is the consensus they came to. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. So they, 
<laughs> These poor QAnon supporters and Trumpists are literally just, I mean, there was people calling C-SPAN in tears, crying, yeah. saying, did my president really lie to us? Right. And these are grown adults, grown men and women who have got caught up in, in a conspiracy theorist. I mean, the leader of QAnon, Q himself, basically said it was all made up. Yeah, it's next campaign. He, he even said, I look forward to what's coming. Check back in six months. I've got a whole other thing going on. Campaign. So, I mean, literally, he just made this shit up, fed it to people for the last four years, fed into this lie, this horrible lie, and supported of Trump and all these Trumpists. And at the end of the day, he said, hey, it was cool while it lasted, but it's over. It was, wasn't real. So support Biden. He's our new president. And that's that. So, I mean, it... <laughs> 2020. Oh, gotta love 2020. But, you know, honestly, 2021 kind of came in with quite an interesting... Um, it whew. It just, it, it, it was rough. The first yeah. few weeks were kind of rough in 2021. And, um, you know, my heart does go out for all these people because I, I know that they truly believed in their hearts that they were supporting a cause that they felt was worthy, that yeah. they believed, they truly believed themselves to be patriots. Mm -hmm. And even though they were all a little fucking crazy and... Um, we all are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, well, most people are. But the truth is, you know, they were lied to. They, yeah. they were really lied to. They got caught up in one of the biggest scams our country has ever seen. Yeah. At the tune of $300 million as he was walking and out. And they door. paid for Trump to literally pay off his debts. They literally gave Trump almost $300 million mm -hmm. that he turned around and just used for paying off his debts is what everybody figured. I mean, that money didn't go to a campaign to, you know, take back the election because he already lost the fucking election. Yeah. He knew it. He couldn't win it back because that would have to overturn democracy, which was yeah. never going to happen. And Trump He's just rode the wave. He's the, like the king of hustlers. Right. I mean, he, he lied to the American people. Q lied to the American people. They gave him almost $300 million to support this man to take back the presidency and now he's retiring, you know? Now we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with this second impeachment. Right. And I know that's on its way, I believe, this next week with the Senate. And they and are... I have very mixed emotions about it. I, uh, I think it's a travesty that we would present the leader of the greatest, I say the greatest, but of, of the United States of America, which to me has always been the greatest nation in the world. Mm -hmm. But again, it's the only nation I've ever truly lived in right, right? um and so bias is a motherfucker boy it'll twist your mind up mm -hmm. and make you believe things that aren't necessarily true and so i think if i can say anything about 2020 2020 taught us that the illusions aren't necessarily real and if you don't pay attention to what is real you can become very sick and die yeah and uh, i would encourage 2021 for people to deep inhale truth no yeah. matter how much it hurts, no matter how, un how uncomfortable it is, no matter how much it makes you itch and twitch right. and wiggle mm -hmm. and say, God, do people really yeah. think that about me? Is that really who I am? Is that, do I, have I really, did I really spend 2020 screaming Trump <laughs> will be president yeah. in 2021? Yeah. Look, or, 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 or did I really spend 2020 believing that the coronavirus wasn't real? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who have lost loved ones would tell you otherwise. Yeah. And I think my personal opinion is I think it's greatly selfish of things that people have said to others about the virus, about the fact that they don't believe it's real, sure. talking about not wearing masks, all these things. And I, I think that people need to step back and realize maybe you don't believe it, but how about have respect for our fellow Americans? How about have respect for humanity and honor each other instead of tearing down each other? And 
you know, supporting one another as we go through one of the toughest things that may ever happen to people so in this true. lifetime. And, you know, on the flip side of it, I heard a, uh, a uh, powerful, powerful interview by a uh, bar owner, restaurant owner mm -hmm. in, in Michigan. And uh, his response to the epidemic was, it's not that I don't believe it's real. Mm hmm I'm not staying open in defiance against the mandate to close because I don't believe it's real. I'm doing it because I don't have any support beyond the hard work that I do. Yeah. And America, listen, I get, I get money. I get the fact that yeah. we don't want to have a nation of, of takers on, and a socialist system. Right. Yeah. I, I, I get the fact that the concept of, of our nation was based on a Christian principle. If you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. Right. That uh, we don't necessarily have an obligation for somebody else. We have an obligation for our own home. Yeah. Right. But in a world where this poor man has, has tried to build a restaurant yeah. and he's getting on television and say, hey, you could have ended the virus in, in two months if you would have just shut everybody down. Yeah. But instead, I go to Walmart, and there's people eating hot dogs standing right next to each other. But you're forcing me to shut down. You're giving them money. Yeah. Not, I, I don't say Walmart um, as though they're the enemy. Right. Because I don't even know if they received any money through the, through the epidemic. I'm saying biz business receive yeah. money. Corporations. However, corporations, however, these small business owners who could have received you know $20,000 for two months and could have shut their doors paid their staff something to stay along. They were basically dragged through the mud, villainized. And now if they don't do anything, their, their business will be lost. So I say that we all need to be sympathetic. We all need to be empathetic towards people Yeah. Um, and come up with solutions together. But that only comes about by a bipartisan approach to politics yeah. and getting over ourselves, right? Yeah. Because it's very difficult for people that are, are uh, slanted from one view to see the other side but when we come together and we have honest dialogue um and we make the facts the facts mm -hmm. we have a great chance um lion art institute and i believe that there's great things for your future yeah in accepting the realities that are in front of us and that's not to say not to live with faith without faith that's not to say don't live with hope mm -hmm. i think the greatest of these is love and you right. we should all live with a great de degree of love, a de great degree of hope for the future, and an abandoned faith that everything's going to work out. But in that optimism, right, we can't become so one-sided yeah. that we can't hear the truth of our brothers. I mean, look, if you have no problem with dress codes at restaurants, if you have no problem... <sighs> taking clear bags into sports games then shut the fuck up and put a mask on i mean i'm I, I don't know what else to say because if you have no issue with these things right these are rules policies and you don't have a problem with them but you have a problem with wearing a mask to save human lives you are the problem so, just getting that out of the way. But look, no, seriously, people, it is not that difficult. I know there's medical conditions. Some people struggle. Look, I struggled wearing a mask in the beginning. My anxiety went through the roof. I had horrible anxiety attacks when I had to wear masks um, for a long time, and sure. it, it was not fun. I hyperventilate still yeah, it's, at times. Yeah. It's rough. I mean, nobody's denying that it's not pleasant, but watching somebody you love is not pleasant. Die. Yeah, sorry. Watching someone you love die is not pleasant. Yeah. And it's not something anybody wants to experience. And in 2021, I would really love to see humanity and the love for brothers and our sisters rise up together and rebuild this nation. So good. But the only way we're going to do that is to care about the person standing next to you. The person standing six feet away from you in a grocery store line. The only way we're going to fix this is to care about that person, whether I know them or not. Have respect for each other and value human life because that is what this is about. It is about valuing human life and trying to help prevent hundreds of thousands of more people dying that don't need to die.
And maybe somehow through all this, we can get a handle on this pandemic and get back to life, get back to living, get back to feeling alive again. Partying like a rock star. Party, hey. <laughs> I'm ready to get my groove on. Mm-mm-mm. Come on. <laughs> America, we love you. World, we love you. Yeah. And uh, we believe that this is going to be a great season if we make good choices. Yeah. Right? For sure. And uh, the choice that is in front of you is a good choice. Mm-hmm. This channel is a good choice for you. It is. And uh, we hope that you will subscribe. Yep. We hope that you'll encourage your friends to watch and subscribe. That's really how we survive is that we grow steadily and consistently since consistently through our subscription base yeah. and uh, we are excited to be able to present messages um, of faith hope and love that we would encourage people we hope this is encouraging to you um, if there's a topic you want us to hit make sure you uh, either DM us if they they say drop into my my, my DM <laughs> uh, slide into my DM uh, you uh-huh. know uh, but uh, hit us up, let us know, and uh, we love to uh, t- talk about some challenging topics, yeah. things that you're interested in. Uh, but do like, subscribe, and share this with a friend. I'm Richard Thomas. And I'm Tiffany Thomas. And we're the Lionheart Institute Podcast. God bless you, and we will see you next time. See you later. Yeah.